All right, let's close out what I what if you've been, you know, hopefully you watch these from the playlist from the very beginning. Um, you go to the Bible study channel, you click playlist and you choose a playlist from the very beginning is like, hey, there's second Corinthians or hey, there's the eighth revelation study. And they've pretty much been going in concert together. 25 videos 29 videos so i started revelation four days before i started second corinthians so if you start the eighth revelation study you will get all of second corinthians automatically you'll get the end of what looks like of, oh of course you'll get the end of first corinthians duh so because i did first corinthians and second corinthians i do not do the bible in order though this is what the order looks like i break all four gospels up and i count romans and acts since they are as big as the gospels uh, and i break the bible up into six parts and uh, you know how you have like anchor stores at malls you know, where you park your car and walk through one of the anchor stores to get to the rest of the smaller stores in the middle of the mall. Well, I have six anchors, four Gospels, Romans and Matthew, and I don't have Romans and Acts together so as to have a Gospel in between them. So I go John, Romans, Matthew, Acts, Mark, and Luke, and sprinkled in between each of those anchors after the gospel of john it's john 1 john 2 john 3 philippians colossians titus and then you're on to an anchor romans and then hebrews first thessalonians second so if you notice each section which has an anchor store and then epistles i tried to evenly balance them out 39 and that's divided by chapters so you have 39 total chapters then 40 total chapters, then 38 total chapters, then 38 total chapters, and then 45 total chapters, and then 39 total chapters. Well, the one we just finished was the biggest. We just finished Mark and then 1st and 2nd Corinthians for a total of 45 chapters. It took us from July 18th when we started Mark and closed it out today. On 12.15. Tomorrow we will start Luke. Good Lord willing. On the 16th. Okay. And that'll take a while. What was my point in showing y'all all of that? It was. Um, yeah. Okay. So anyway, we're closing out. We're going to go to Luke next. And now we're going to hit Revelation. Uh, finish Revelation 13 tonight. So let's go. Let's, let's do it. So anyway, that's what I wanted to show you. The playlist and start them from the beginning and how they work. Yeah, it was my order and all of that, wasn't it? Finishing out 2 Corinthians chapter 13 it'll be verses 4 through 14 and that'll close us out for though he was crucified through weakness yet he lived by the power of god and of course jesus was god in the flesh so it's a very it's through that prism you need to understand the completeness of the word of god and how the word of god is written cryptically Jesus spoke in parables. They said, Jesus, why do you speak in parables? He said, because it is meant for you to know the mysteries of the kingdom. For him, for them, it is not. That is Matthew 13, 10 and 11. Jesus is the word, which means the entire word is one big parable and we're told that in first corinthians 2 14 where it says the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit of god not the things of 
the spirit of God. They are foolishness under him, neither can he. Does it say spirit twice? First Corinthians 2.14, King James Version, Bible Gateway. The natural man receiveth not the, it is spirit twice. The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Now, remember, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. That is stated precisely five different times. That the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of truth. And Jesus is the truth. And we know that the, Jesus said, I cannot send the comforter the Holy Spirit, until I ascend. So God went away in the flesh and came back in the Spirit. And we know that in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Thirteen verses later, and the Word became flesh. And it said the Word is God. Jesus is God in the flesh. God is so exponentially extreme that we as humans would not be able to carry on any type we would not be able to understand grasp or absorb the enormality if that's a word like enormousness Enormality. No, I made up a word, didn't I? I sure did. Outrageous and proper vision. <laughs> so enormality came from the word enormous, which is what I was searching for. We cannot, but when it came to God, it was like taking the word enormous. God's just too enormous for us to be able to compartmentalize him to where we would be able to understand him or function. So what does he have to do? He has to narrow his enormousness and came in the flesh and talked as a man. And then he comes to us in our spirit and he becomes humanized because we're understanding the truth, albeit the truth, but we're understanding him uh, on a human level that we can experience him, experience the truth. In other words, the way I explain it to people is the Holy Spirit and Jesus are just two pathways in which God communicated with his sheep, period. So he was crucified through weakness, yet he lived by the power of God, for we also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith, in other words, the calling, in the faith. What does it mean to be in the faith? I, I thought faith was just saying, I believe I got faith. And you go on about now to be in the faith means to actually being in the process of being in the calling. Hebrews 11, 1 King James Version Bible Gateway. James 2.26, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Romans 10.17, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Oh, I don't remember it, do I? 
Romans 12 something. I mean, uh, it's Proverbs 12 something. No, it's 21. Can't think of it. The hearing ear and the seeing eye, even the Lord have made both. Proverbs 2012. Boy, I was all over the place, wasn't I? Proverbs 2012, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Let's just put the Bible together for you just a little bit. The hearing ear, that means to truly hear proper truth. Not just your ear and the seeing eye. That means to be able to properly see. Every single one of Jesus's healings were what he does to us today. He gave the blind the ability to see, the deaf the ability to hear, the dumb the ability to speak. What is that really about? Us today that we can see the truth, hear the truth, speak the truth. When he was healing the lepers, leprosy was a form of sin in the Bible. Leprosy constituted a form of sin in the Bible. Five ways leprosy is a picture of sin. Okay, simple Google search. What the Bible says about le leprosy as symbolic of sin. So you get the idea. I'm, I didn't just bring it up out of the uh, thin air. So when he was healing the lepers, what he was doing is, is healing our, our sinful nature. All right. So the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord have made even both of them. And that's when we get that, that calling for whom he did predestinate, then he also called. And whom he called, he also justified. And whom he justified, he also glorified. You must be predestinated from the foundation of the world if you're a sheep. Because that's how it says the process begins. For, for he hath chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world. To be holy and blameless before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. So you get predestinated from before the foundation of the world. Sheep were chosen before the earth was even formed. Then you're born into this earth lost. You're a lost sheep and you will get the call from the shepherd that is your baptism by the Holy Spirit and fire. The fiery trials is when the Lord starts pulling you out of the world. Very long involved. But the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord have made even both. Well, how do you get your faith? Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We know that the word of God is Jesus. And Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. We also know in James 26, for as the body without spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. If you don't have fruit, if you're not bearing fruit, if you're not proving out your salvation, then you have no true faith. You must be producing works of the faith or works of faith or john 15 you must bear fruit you must be bearing fruit or you're just as dead as a body is without having any spirit in it why am i giving you all this because this is the true definition of faith Faith is the substance. It's something tangible. It's your works, isn't it? Haven't we just been learning that? What is your blessed hope? It is your salvation. You are hopeful. You're never for sure. There's never a sign that appears on your forehead that says, sheep, guaranteed, stamped on your forehead. 
you're walking around and everybody's like, well, that person's a sheep. His eyes glow. His head spins around backwards. I don't know. He can walk through a wall, say he's a sheep. There's no absolute sign that you're a sheep. Is there? No. In the fake churches, they tell you, as long as you say you believe, as long as you have faith, that's the fake faith. What's the real faith? The real faith is the substance of your salvation, of things hoped for. Faith is the tangible evidence of your salvation. It's the substance of things hoped for. Your hope is that you are saved. Some people, I've had people before that are like, you ask them, well, what's your blessed hope? They go, well, that Jesus? My hope is Jesus? Well, you mean you're saying you hope there's a Jesus? <laughs> you're not sure there's a Jesus. You just hope there's one? Bah! No, your blessed hope is not that you hope there's a Jesus. Your hope, your blessed hope. What is your blessed hope? The meaning is the good hope, the good hope for which is laid up in heaven. And this is called a blessed hope on double account. The blessed hope. What is the blessed hope of Titus 2.13? Let's go to that. Because I knew I was getting the word blessed hope from somewhere. Titus 2.13, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Do we need context? Do we need a few verses before it or after it? I don't know. That blessed hope. I knew I'd gotten that term from somewhere. Looking for that blessed hope. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And people will say, isn't our blessed hope Jesus? No, it's that you already know there's a Jesus. But your hope is, is that his glorious appearing is for you. <laughs> Do you not see how easy people get twisted in the word of god for the grace of god what is grace it's him choosing you from before the foundation of the world for grace you are saved through faith it is not of yourselves it is the gift of god it is not of works lest any man boast of a free will decision sorry through that last part in go to the next verse for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto the good works. We were created unto good works. But we're not done. Which God have before ordained that we walk in them. Before ordained when? Um, for he hath chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world. Before ordained? Yes, he ordained it before the foundation of the world. That's grace, that God chose you, knew you, created you as a sheep before the earth was even formed. Is that taught in any churches? Oh, no. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. Sure isn't. For the grace of God that bring of salvation have appeared to all now to all men when you break that down what happens when you break that down the word men breaks down into actual subsets and that subset would be sheep that's the beauty of the myriad of definitions that were in Greek words. Like our word for men doesn't have all the definitions the Greeks did. The Greeks offered subsets. In other words, if we were to say it in English, 
for the grace of God that bring us salvation have appeared to all sheep, which would be breaking it down into a subset of men as the saved ones. Let's just let's just go ahead on and bring that up. Titus. Let's go to Blue Letter Bible. Go to Titus 211. Let's just continue to unravel, unravel how tricky the word of God is. Have appeared to all men. All individually. Each, every, any. Any of what? Any of the group of the next word. Of the subset. Look at all the definitions down here from men. Indefinitely, someone, a man, one. Watch this subset. With reference to the twofold nature of man, the corrupt and the truly Christian man, conform to the nature of God. Starts off with a human being, whether male or female, then goes generically to include all human individuals. And then the next one says to distinguish man from beings of a different order, talking about he's different from plants and animals. He's different than God of Christ. He's different from the angels. Got it. And then with the added notion of weakness by which man is led into a mistake or promoted by sin with the adjunct notion of contempt or disdainful pity with reference to the twofold nature of man, body and soul, with the reference of the twofold nature of man, the corrupt and the truly Christian man conformed to the nature of God. So there is a subset with reference to sex, a male and definitely someone, a man, one, in the plural, people, joined with other words, merchantmen. And then down here, the sum of all types, even though that it states all, all, collectively the sum of all types of sheep collectively and that is where the actual definition is where it says all that's a subgroup of mankind does that make sense where it says the sum of all types. What's the type? Sheep. Yeah, it's not, it's not broken up in the uh, anthropos and man. It's broken up in the word all. That the sheep man. So it's not the word man. It had been a while since I've revisited this. I just knew it was one of them. It's the subset, not of man, but it's the subset of this word all. It doesn't mean every human on earth. And there was something that somebody said where I had read it. Because if you go look at these places where it says all men, it was like all men knew John the Baptist. All men knew John the Baptist.
it was something like that. And you know that not every single person on earth knew John the Baptist. So it was the subset of, barely I say to you, among them that are born of women that have not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom. Nope, that's not it. Where is that Bible verse? What the Bible says about John the Baptist. Let me, let me go to all men for you. Or let me go to the word all for you. I'll find it. Like he didn't all men and showed it, the, showed it the first time it was used. And this is what Jesus said. And you shall be hated of all men. Are sheep going to hate you? Nope. Then does that mean everybody on the earth? No. It's a subset of goats. Let's go to the next one. But he said unto them, all men cannot receive this saying, save they to whom it is given, subset of goats. Peter answered and said unto him, though all men shall be offended because of thee, yet will I never be offended. Again, subset, goats. Let's go to a different... Go back to the filter of all men. Now, sometimes all and men aren't together. Let's go to Mark. We're looking for any verse that has the word all and men. And when they had found him, they said unto him, all men seek for thee. Does that mean every person on the earth was seeking Jesus? Or whoever this is talking about. I'm assuming it's Jesus. I know some of the Gospels begin with John the Baptist. No, it's a subset. It says, all men seek for thee. That's how tricky. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him and all men did marvel. Does that mean every person on the earth did marvel? No. So I apologize for wasting your time when I went through the word men. Um, it's, it's that word all that breaks it down into a sub subset. Collectively, some of all types of whatever you're talking about. It's from the word all. Our word all doesn't mean that. If we want to break something down to a subset, we have to actually say the name. All of the sheep. And that word man might also have, there might be something to it that helps it. Where it says, down here where it says the corrupt you know, with reference to the twofold nature of man, the corrupt and the truly Christian man, you know, does that mean you're able to divide those two into a subset? I mean, I don't know. It says down here, definitely someone, a man, one, indefinitely, comma, someone, comma, a man, comma, one. So it literally can be broke down into meaning one man, this word that they, they use for men. That's how tricky the Bible is. God did not come for all man. Why did we get off on that subject? Because it was Titus. Look, we were looking for the, talking about the blessed hope. For the grace of God that brings us salvation hath appeared to all men, sheep. And that's how they trick you. And, and Jesus meant for it to trick God's ordained the end from the beginning, so God ordained that his truth would be twisted, and the Bible's warned of it. If anybody brings you another Jesus, what's that other Jesus? That's right, the hippie Jesus that loves the whole world.
That's what it says in John 3, 16. Yeah. For God so loved cosmos. For God so loved cosmos. Go to John 3, 16. For God so loved the, what, what he actually loved was G2889, cosmos, which is how we get our word world from today, but we don't use all these definitions. God had the truth hidden in the Greek that had layered so many different definitions for one word. This is what God so loved. It wasn't down here, the inhabitants of the earth, the human family. That is not what God so loved. If that was the case, they would all, the whole earth would be saved. When Jesus said, the world hated me before it hated you, did he mean the inhabitants of the earth? No, because sheep's not going to hate you. He meant the ungodly multitude. The whole mass of men or women alienated from God and therefore hostile to the cause of Christ. And when Jesus, when it said Jesus, uh, for God so loved the world, did he mean the ungodly multitude? No. Did he mean the entire inhabitants of the earth? No. He meant his appropriate, harmonious arrangement or constitution, comma, order. What's his order? Everything he's ordained the end from the beginning. And part of his order was choosing his family, his kingdom, his government, his arranging what would constitution be? I see it as sort of his law, the word. Kind of law slash word. His absolute truth, his constitution. His arranging of his law, of his word. His order of things. His kingdom, his government. An appropriate and harmonious arrangement. What is his harmonious arrangement? It's what he loves his bride, which he did arrange from before the foundation of the world when he put things into order. Government kingdom. That's what God so loved. Cryptically hidden. And today they just go, oh, he loves the whole world. <laughs> See, it says right there, wishing all men be saved. All sheep be saved. He loses not one of his sheep, Jesus said. So let's go back. For the grace, what is grace? God choosing you from before the foundation of the world. So for God choosing you from before the foundation of the world, grace of God, that bringeth salvation, that's how you're saved, through grace, have appeared to all men, the sheep, teaching us, who's us? Sheep. <laughs> that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, after you're called, before the Lord calls you, you'll be acting just like a goat. You'll be all up in the worldly lust. Until I got called in 2012, well, how old was I? I'm 61 now. It's about 51 years old. Well, I was 50 and three quarters. When the Lord started calling me out of the world, but he didn't give me the truth in his word as far as election predestination and all this until 2017. Denying of godliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present what? world 
Is that the appropriate harmonious arrangement? No. That would be the earth. What the Bible called the circle of the earth. The circle of the earth. It's flat. It's a flat circle. You're surrounded by Antarctica. That's why you're not allowed to go there except to pet seals. And then they'll go, okay, bye-bye, and send you right back. They don't want you to see the firmament, the ice walls, and so on. And then beyond the ice walls, there's, there's a dome you can't break through. When they talk about breaking that glass ceiling, that's what they're talking about. So teaching us denying ungodliness and worldly lust that we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that blessed hope. Is Jesus the blessed hope? Or is your salvation that blessed hope? And the glorious appearing, that blessed hope, let God be true in every man a liar. In my opinion, they're not saying you hope there's a Jesus. You're saying really moving backwards through the prism of the truth of the matter. You're hoping that Jesus is coming for you. You hope that you're blessed to be his sheep, predestinated and elected sheep from before the foundation of the world. And subsequent, because if you have that, the glorious appearing of the great God, Savior, Savior Jesus Christ is for you. Who gave himself that he might redeem us, sheep, world from all iniquity and to purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of what good works if you don't have the good works because remember faith without works is dead so you get back to faith faith is the tangible substance it is the substance. It is something you can touch, smell, see, feel. It's your what? That's your works. That is your faith is the actual works. Have you ever heard of walking in faith? That means you're walking in truth. That means you're carrying yourself as a real sheep. Have you ever heard of the works of faith? Is that even a Bible verse? The works of faith, Bible verse. I don't think there's an actual Ephesians 2, 8 through 10. Ephesians chapter 2, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Oh, is that what that just said? Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, that's your grace passage. <laughs> For grace you are saved through faith. What color do we want to give that? Let's go with it. Green. Grace, you're saved through what? Through the calling that brings forth tangible works, proving evidence that you're a sheep. Let's finish this again. Faith is the tangible substance, evidence of your salvation, comma, just to prove that that's what it says watch what it says after the comma it's the evidence of things not seen what's not seen john 3 8 king james version bible gateway the holy spirit is not seen is it in other words it's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Faith is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Evidence of things not seen. What's not seen? The Holy Spirit is not seen. Per John 3, 8. Ready? The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. 
but can it not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth? So is everyone that is born of the spirit. <laughs> it's like the wind. <coughs> You can hear it when it's blowing through the trees, but you cannot tell. You cannot tell where it's coming from or where it's going to. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof. You can hear it blowing through something, but where did it come from? But cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. It's unseen. You can't see the wind, can you? You can see effects of the wind you can see effects of the holy spirit can't you that is your faith it's the proof of the holy spirit it's the evidence of the let's just let's just read this part now faith is i'm going to highlight that in blue and i'm going to highlight this in blue now, faith is the evidence of the things not seen. Faith is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. Substance, tangible. I'm going to put that in blue too. Now, faith is the substance. It's the evidence of the Holy Spirit, things not seen. Then all you have to figure out I guess we need to put that in blue too, don't we? Yeah. I messed up. I put that back in green. Oh, it wouldn't do it for me. Anyway, faith is the actual tangible evidence of your blessed hope. And you want to break down hope? By the way, it is not of your works like a free will decision, lest any man boast of a free will decision, your salvation, that is, because it came through grace. God choosing you from before the foundation of the world just to prove it. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. Created in Christ Jesus when? Go to the previous chapter, Ephesians 1, 4, and 5, for you have chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world. That's when you were created in Christ Jesus from before the foundation of the world, stated clearly in the previous chapter you were created unto a true walk of faith unto good works for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto these good works of faith right which god have before or before ordained when before the foundation of the world previous chapter ephesians 1 4 and 5 for he hath chosen us in him from before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption to himself by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Ephesians one, four and five. That's what grace is. And it's re-explained as actual grace in the next chapter. Ephesians two, eight, nine and 10. And what was it that we were looking for? Works of faith, Bible verse. That's what they gave us, works of faith. 
20 Bible verses about works of faith. Even so, faith, if it have no works, is dead being by itself, James 2.17. So this is all in James 2. James 2, all over the place with it. All of these are from James 2. Let's go on to 2 Thessalonians 3.10 and see what it says. Because the top seven or eight were from James chapter 2. For even when we were with you, we used to give you this order. If anyone is not willing to work, then he not to eat either. Mm, I don't know. I, I get I get the deeper concept of that. Acts 26 10, but kept declaring both to those in Damascus first and also at Jerusalem, and then throughout all the region of Judea, even to the Gentiles, that they should repent and turn to God, performing deeds appropriate to repentance. Well, to this end, we pray you always that our God will count you worthy of your calling. It's a calling. You have to be called to the real truth and fulfill every desire of goodness and the work of faith with power. There's the word work of faith. Okay. There's James 2 again. So anyway, there's a lot of Bible verses in there. It's, it's a whole slew of them. Some don't really apply, I don't think, to what we're talking about. But So now you know what faith is. Examine yourselves whether ye be in the faith. Is that just me walking around going, well, I believe in Jesus. Hey, you guys got any reefer? <laughs> Let's go uh, get a fifth of whiskey. And let's go find a prostitute. Is that being in faith? Examine yourselves whether ye be in faith. That's how you start to get your blessed hope. And that was the word I was going to look for next. When you start to look for that word hope and you do a search for hope and you want to filter it Go to Hebrews and just look for it in Hebrews. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope, your salvation. But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, sheep, Remember, this is all instruction, and a lot of it sounds like you have a choice. It's the, the, the instruction given is the illusion of free will. It is an illusion. Whose house are we if we, sheep, hold fast? This is your instruction. Hold fast. Keep the faith, right? Keep the good works, and you can't do it unless you're called to it. The Lord does it. He beats the world out of you. Hebrews 12, 6 through 8. For whom the Lord loveth. Well, I thought he loved everybody. No, no, he doesn't. It. Hebrews 12, 6 through 8. For whom the Lord loveth, his sheep, he chastens and scourges every single one of them. And verse 8 closes with, if ye be without this chastisement, this locking down, beating process, where all of God's sheep are partakers, then you're a bastard. You're not a son. What do you think the movie Inglorious Bastards was about? They have no glory. They are bastards. They're always making fun of the Bible with movie titles, songs, song titles, lyrics, scenes in movies, words in movies. But Christ as a son over his own house Whose house are we? Because we're all one body. He's the body. He's the bread. If we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end. 
If we desire, is that hope Jesus? Nope. That hope is your salvation. It's not Jesus. Rejoicing of the Jesus firm unto the end? No. Of the salvation. Sorry, I left all that out. I had to backtrack a little bit. And we desire that every one of you do show the same diligence to the full assurance of hope unto the end. Unto the full assurance of Jesus? Or your salvation. Let's see if Strong's Concordance holds up to that. Hebrews 6.11. They do a horrible definition of faith. That's why Jesus had to make his own Bible verse about it. <laughs> or God, Jesus, they're all one of the same. Jesus is the word, though, so I said Jesus. That Jesus was the word, was created by God. They're all one of the same. It's semantics, literally. Um, Hebrews 6.11. Oh, and faith, when you just look up faith, it just says believing. And blah, blah, blah. No. No. So anyway, and that puts John 3.16 back into perspective. Those that believe on his name. In other words, those that are actually called in his name, because it isn't faith the actual tangible evidence, the works, the works of what? The works of grace. For grace, you're, you are saved through faith, through the calling to righteousness and walking upright. I want to say it's Hebrews 6.11. It is. Let's go. Let's quit digressing. Ooh. I want to see what they say for hope. This might have, could have saved me a lot of time, but I don't trust them because a lot of things are watered down now. Expectation of evil or fear. Is that hope? In a Christian sense, joyful confident expectation of eternal salvation they actually did it right i could have just cut to the chase a long time ago and just showed you the definition <laughs> oh the thing hoped for the author of hope is jesus or he who is its foundation is jesus then it says the thing hoped for on hope in hope having hope i think they kind of screwed that up and again, these are men's, this is a man named Strong's definition. Uh, who is Strong of Strong's Concordance? James Strong, he was a theologian. He didn't do it perfectly, I can tell you that. But he covered his basis when he said expectation of good, hope, in a Christian sense. Because, see, it's different from the two. This is two. One is expectation of fear, comma, fear. Well, that's not how we see it used most of the time. Number two, we do. Number three, eh, I think he botched that up a little bit. Well, I like on hope, in hope, having hope. But the author of hope or he who is its foundation. Yeah, I mean, he's the author of your salvation, or he is who, he is the foundation of your salvation. But you come down here, the thing hoped for your salvation. Yes, in a Christian sense, joyful and confident expectation of eternal salvation. And how do you start to get your hope when you see yourself being pulled out of the world? You quit celebrating Christmas, you see how everybody's kind of like, hmm. That's not too cool. That's when it starts. That's when you start to go. I think I might be a sheep. Maybe. I'm in hope of it. But you don't walk around all day long because you, you constantly feel your flesh. You're constantly losing your temper. But you will. I will say this. If you are a sheep, Galatians 5, 19 through 21, King James Version, Bible Gateway. If you are a sheep, 
the Lord will pull you out of these because it says at the end, they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom. It means you're not a sheep. If you stay in this, when, when you see the Lord pulling you out of adultery, fornication, that's right, unmarried sex, uncleanliness, levaciousness, how much of the church is doing that? And I don't just mean Christians. Well, I shouldn't have said it like that. How much of today's so-called Christians are doing that? They're having unmarried sex. Just about every, well, all but one that I know, and but they're free willers. I don't even know if they're sheep. They stayed celibate till they were married. But they're not in the truth. But if you're his, he will pull you out. Now, like I said, 99% of the church is lost. I think they're in every world religion today. All of them, Far East, Middle East, and even fake Christianity. They're all world religions, all run by men in buildings. They're going to get the call at the abomination of desolation. And they're going to get their heads lopped off. Okay. And so, but it says idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies. So all of that, and a lot of that uh, verse 20 is, is just bickering and fighting and arguing. Then it says envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings. They which do everything in that list through to their death just one of them through to your, in other words if you're his don't worry the lord will pull you out of it if you're not his don't worry have a blast you can't worry about it there's nothing you personally can do about it if you're his you will get convicted when will all 99 percent of the sheep feel this at the abomination of desolation they won't be handed over to the strong delusion. They will not be handed over to it. So faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The word of God is Jesus. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Hello. Faith without works is dead. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. If your blessed hope is Jesus and not your salvation, then it's the substance of Jesus. <laughs> However you want to look at it, but they had to write definition in Strong's Concordance. It was still fun perusing through the Bible, though, wasn't it? It's the evidence of things not seen. It's the evidence. What's not seen? The Holy Spirit. Faith is tangible, proper works of salvation. It's the evidence of the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's tangible. That's not how you're saved. You're saved by grace, by God choosing you to this walk, to calling you to the walk busting you up through the walk what did i say hebrews 12 6 through 8 the lord busts you up he sure does for whom the lord loveth oh, i thought he loved everybody uh no we just got through explaining john three sixteen. he chastens he locks you down and scourges he beats Every son whom he receiveth. If you endure this locking down process, God is dealing with you as one of his sons. For what son whom a father would not properly raise? But if you be without this locking down process where all of God's sheep are partakers, all, all men, it is all, isn't it? It's the subset. There's that all again. All men. All are partakers. It's not the men. It's that word all that creates a subset. 
whereof all are partakers, all of humankind, no, all sheep are partakers, then you're a bastard and not a son. If you are without this locking down process where all of the sheep do receive this locking down process, then you're a bastard and you're not a son. The Lord locks you down and beats the world out of you. For whom the Lord loveth, he chastens and scourges. The Lord beats you. Good grief. When you go to John 15, 16 through 19, he says it right here. Ye have not chosen me. I have chosen you. But I have chosen you and ordained you that ye should go and bring forth fruit right proper works of salvation and that your fruit should remain that whatsoever ye shall ask of the father in my name he may give you don't think of god as a magic genie those verses are don't take them literal for like in today's times what some preacher would tell you these things i command you that ye love one another is that for us or just for the apostles? Because he's talking to the apostles in, in this chapter 15, like he was to us. But don't we use this for everybody that we love one another? And that's a proper love, by the way. It doesn't mean have affection for the whole earth. It means that sheep live properly, walk properly among each other. I guarantee you that's probably agape, which Strong's doesn't on this internet site at Blue Letter no longer does love proper agape because it's not true affection. It's not affection. Let's move on. If the world hate you, that's your tribulation right there. In Acts 14, 22, it says, we all through much tribulation enter the kingdom much tribulation you have to suffer again most all sheep on this earth are not suffering for the truth that's why the great trib is for the church because the church there is hardly it's almost non-existent you get the truth here i don't know where you get the complete truth other than here there are certain factions that will teach you partial of what I give you. Not encompassing as much as I give you. Do I give you 100% of the truth? No, I don't know. I do not know 100% of the word of God. But if there's something you want to uh, run by me, the Holy Spirit will help me figure it out for us. But I don't sit right here and go, I know every everything the Bible says, what it means at its deepest levels now. And any time that, that something is, I mean, especially in end times prophecy, where I'm like a little ambiguous, I, I state it. In my Revelation studies or Daniel studies, I state it. I'm like, I'm not sure. Let God be true and every man a liar. I think it means this, but I'm not sure. But we will outduel from what I've seen anybody out there in the internet world, books, buildings, TV shows, podcasts. If you're listening to this, you're at the right place. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Exactly. Jesus didn't love the whole world, does he? now so many definitions of world if ye were of the world which he didn't love the world would love his own so the world would love you in friendship with the world james 4 4 says is hatred to god you take part in worldly things like birthdays and christmas you're just, you're just telling God you hate him. How many future sheep or how many sheep 
are taking part in some world religion that's ungodly and or pagan like Christmas, 99.9% .9 of all sheep on this earth are lost. They will get the call soon enough. Anyway, let's close it out. But I have chosen you out of the world. Therefore, the world hateth you. Good. That way, you start to get real hope. Well, I see what you did there. Examine yourselves whether ye be in faith. Back to tonight's Bible study. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. In other words, unless you're goats. But I trust that ye shall know that we are not goats, reprobates. Now I pray to God that ye do you do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. Because the Holy Spirit makes sure of it. <laughs> for we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong, and this also we wish, even your perfection. Therefore, I write these things, being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness according to the power which the Lord God have given me to edification, and not to destruction. Finally, brethren, farewell. Be perfect. Be of good comfort. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace shall be with you. Greet one another with an holy kiss. All the saints salute you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Love it. We were to read that in the New Living. I think we would be able to throw out any items that were watered down or not clear. Although he was crucified in weakness, he now lives by the power of God. We also are weak, just as Christ was. But when we deal with you, we will be alive with him and we'll have God's power. Examine yourselves to see if your faith is genuine. In other words, do you have true works? Test yourselves. Surely you know that Jesus Christ is among you. If not, you have failed the test of genuine faith. It says right there, genuine faith. As you test yourselves, in other words, there's the fake faith that goes, yeah, 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 I believe in Jesus. I love Jesus. I know I'm saved. I made a free will decision. Hey, you guys got a fifth of whiskey anywhere? And uh, by the way, where's the dancers? Again, same joke. Based off the truth and the false truths that are out there. As you test yourselves, I hope you will recognize that we have not failed the test of apostolic authority. We pray to God that you will not do what is wrong by refusing our correction. I hope we don't need to demonstrate our authority when we arrive. Do the right thing before we come, even if that makes it look like we have failed to demonstrate our authority. For we cannot oppose the truth, but we must always stand for the truth. We are glad to seem weak if it helps show you are actually strong. We pray that you will become mature in the faith, right? I am writing this to you before I come, hoping that I won't need to deal severely with you when I do come, for I want to use the authority of the Lord given me to strengthen you, not to tear you down again, which is what was just what yesterday's study was about. Usually my studies are four to six minutes, three to five minutes. Today, 
I just had a little too much energy. Paul's final greeting. Dear brothers and sisters, I close my letter with these last words. Be joyful, grow to maturity, encourage each other, live in harmony and peace. Then the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet each other with a sacred kiss. All of God's people here send you their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Remember, not everybody he's writing to is a sheep. Not everybody in Corinth was a sheep. So he was tough on them. All right. So just to synchronize my login, go back to King James with it. Okay. And let's finish Revelation 13. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast come up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spoke as a dragon. Here's your false prophet. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, who had a deadly wound, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders. This is your lying signs and wonders. Second Corinthians chapter 2, 1 through 11, King James Version, Bible Gateway. Uh-oh, we're not logged in here. <gasps> I messed up, that's why. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 1 through 11, King James Version, Bible Gateway. I got Corinthians on the brain. So the man of sin be revealed, says there in verse 3. He will, of course, do it in the in the um, coming third temple where Trump is on all those temple coins. They have the mystery Babylon, which is the mystery of iniquity. Um, their world is a secret, mysterious world that runs this earth from behind the scenes. And it says uh, the working of Satan. This is what the false prophets doing. The working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. And it is Matthew 24, verse 24, King James Version. According to Bible, King James Version. And Jesus said these great signs and wonders that we're just sitting here talking about by this false prophet. You see where it says false Christs and false prophets? When you look up that word Christs and prophets... It's actually singular. I'm not going to get into that tonight because you trust me. I know you do. It is actually talking about the false Christ and the false prophet, which shall show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect of God. And see, God sends the whole goat community a strong delusion that they will all believe the lie that Trump has come back from the deadly wound, the deadly wound that was healed. And do with great wonders that make a fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And he, Paul's prophet, deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, the lying signs and wonders, deception so great that if it were possible, the very elect would be fooled. Great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, the very sheep of the earth would be fooled. But it's not possible, is it? Nope. Saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by the sword and did live. The deadly wound of Zechariah eleven seventeen, which states that it is to the right eye. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause 
that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he called, cause of all. What about the sheep? The whole world? No. That subset of goats, both great and small, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on their right hand or in their foreheads is a spiritual mark that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. And trust me, people read buy and sell and they think, well, it's got to be something to do to where you, it's, it's, it's just, it's just a figurative term. Don't put too much into that. Because once this, why in the world do you think Jesus tells them that are witnessing this do not even go into your house to get a thing run because they're all going to be inhabited by demonic spirits. They're going to be superheroes and they are going to start lopping off the heads of sheep. Probably with their bare hands. I mean, or they're going to pick up, be able to pick up like anything and just whack your head off. They're going to be that powerful and that strong. These are fallen angels killing sheep using human bodies to do so. So there's not going to be buying and selling taking place. Here is wisdom. Let him that have understanding count the number of the beast for his number of a man and his number is 603 score and six. And when you go to this, uh, when you look up Don Drumpf, which that was the family surname, it comes to 666 in English, Gematria. Trump was the Trump surname. Was Donald Trump's family surname once Trump Snopes? And they say, of course, mostly true. Donald Trump's name was not, but the family surname was. The surname of Donald Trump's family was originally Trump. Yes. Anyway. So Don Trump comes to 666. But more importantly, if you key in, S-I-X, 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 you get Donald John Drumpf right there. So his name was changed to Trump to where Jesus said the Antichrist would be here in his own name, John 5, 43. And a Trump is a horn and a horn is a Trump. And the horn was the Antichrist of, of the book of Daniel chapter seven and eight. So he's here in his own name as Donald Horn, Donald Trump. They're one and the same. They're all trumpets. Well, I fooled around and lost our uh, Bible study. But um, that is the number of the man. And his number is 603 score and six. All right. Love you very much. Ask questions anytime. That's what I'm here for.